Good morning everyone, I am Judy Ann Perez from College of Sciences, Technology and Communication Incorporated, Sarayaya Kesson. For today's lesson, I am going to tackle the writing identification test. Our learning objectives at the end of this lesson, you will be able to first define what identification test is, understand the advantages and disadvantages of identification test, and lastly, learn the guidelines for preparing an identification test. Okay, let's proceed to its definition. Identification test it is a type of examination that can be scored objectively. It is also a recall type of examination. It is usually demand only the short answers. It is most often to test remembering key facts and terms. And lastly, it is also a form of restricted response test. There are two types of short answers. The first one is the question enumeration. It is an answers a few short words or phrases. The second one is the completion fill in the blanks. It is a statement with a keyword or missing words. Okay, now let's proceed to the advantages of identification test. The first one is it is easy to construct. It is low probability of guessing the answer because it has to be supplied rather than selected from the given answers. And the third one, they are good to test the lower level of cognitive taxonomy. Also, identification test has disadvantages or the limitations. The first one is identification test measures only rote memory. The second one is they are usually restricted to short words. Hence, items tend to measure recall the specific facts, names, places, or the events. And the third one is it is rarely measures the more complex outcomes. Then, I have here the do's and don'ts. If the type of our question is short answer, we should use own words, use specific problems, use direct questions, and use questions that elicit facts, not opinions. Then, we should not use trivia, and we should not use long or complex sentences. And then, if our type of question will be fill in the blanks, we should use prompts that omits only one or two keywords at the end of the sentence. Then, we should use questions that elicit facts, not opinions. And then, we should not take out of so many words that the sentence is meaningless. Okay, let's proceed to the guidelines in preparing an identification test. The first one is, give the students a reasonable basis for the responses desired. Avoid indefinite statements. Here in our given example, the birthplace of President Noy Noy Akin is blank. So here we are given our students a basis for their responses to be needed. Then the second one is, avoid over mutilated statements. So here in our given example, the blank is obtained by dividing the blank by the blank. So here, our students will be confused by their answers because there is a lot of blanks that they need to be answers. Then in here in our improved form, the intelligence quotient is obtained by dividing the first blank by the second blank. So here, we have the given idea or answers that our students need to write on the blanks. Then the second one, avoid giving the students unwarranted clues to the desired response. Avoid lifting statements directly from the books. Omit only words or phrases rather than trivial details. Whenever possible, avoid a or an immediately before a blank. These words may give a clue of whether a response starts with a consonant or a vowel. Then, do not indicate the expected answers by varying the length of the blanks or using a dot for each letter in the correct answer. Then, guard against the possibility that one item or part of the test may guess the correct response to another item. Avoid giving grammatical clues to the answers expected. So, here in the third one, arrange the test to facilitate the scoring. Allow one point for each blank correctly filled. Avoid fractional credits or unequal weighing of items in a test. 
select the items to which only one correct response is possible. Arrange the item as far as possible so that the student's responses are in a colon at the right of the sentences. Scoring is more rapid if the blocks are numbered at the students is directed to write his or her response in the appropriate numbered blanks. So here, prepare a key for scoring by writing on a copy of the test all acceptable answers. So here in our given examples, an oxygenated blood from the veins is received by the blank of the heart while oxygenated blood from the heart is ejected into the arteries via the blank of the heart. So here we have the given idea or the given answers that our student need to write on the blanks. So the third one is the blank acts as the heart pacemaker. So here we have the correct answers that our student need to write on the blank. Then let's proceed to the other guidelines and suggestions. The first one is minimize questions that call for sheer memory work unless the answer has important analytical significance. Then the second one is praise the item so that a unique word, series of words, or number must be supplied to complete it. Then the direction fill in the blanks is usually sufficient, but our students should be informed about how detailed the answer should be. Then fill in the blanks items requiring calculations and solving mathematical type problems should include in this statement the type of answer and degree of specificity desired. Then write questions that are specific and can be answered in a few words, phrases, or short sentences. Then use one blank or certainly no more than two in any item, since more than two blanks lead to confusion and the ambiguity. Then when there is a need to write a longer answer, provide sufficient space or use separate answer sheet. Then the last one, before writing the item, think of the correct answer first and then write a question or a statement for the answer. Okay, thank you everyone. This is my reference. Thank you for listening and God bless.